Pathway event. Has anyone gone to another Pathway event earlier today? We've got one up front, two hands in the back. All right, hopefully you're learning good stuff. So um, the next hour in this room, you have two campus partners uh, meeting to share some valuable information with you. So the first half, the School of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences has some students, faculty, and staff in the room to talk to you specifically about our cultural studies types majors. So we're going to talk about our gender, women, sexuality studies major, cultural literature and the arts, science, technology, and society, and American and ethnic studies. And so we have faculty representing those disciplines and students representing this major. But what we really want to do is not talk about the logistics, like what GPA do I need to apply for your major? Or which class should I take as a sophomore? All of the information that we think a lot of students want about our majors is on our website. So that's on the screen behind me. You see all of the majors offered in IES. And today we're just talking about a small little cluster. But um, what we are really interested in is hearing from you what type of questions you would like to know like beyond the brochure. Maybe you're thinking about ways that you could work in business with an IAS major, or how can you join a nonprofit organization with an IAS major. Uh, all of those type of questions to help you start thinking about a pathway to your next step with IAS is what we're excited to talk about today. So before we do introductions, there are two questions that our, our IAS team is going to answer today to kind of start you know, getting that conversation started. You're going to hear from us, and we'll answer what is one thing that we find truly valuable, unique, or important about an IS major we're representing today. And then we're also going to say what is one thing that a student considering a major or minor in IS should know. Any other questions that you have, write them down, because we can't wait to answer them. Be, um, let's see, I don't have enough paper, so I'm not going to offer you paper. Hopefully you can <laughs> turn to a friend and Find some paper if you need it. So we'll start with introductions. My name is Ava Navarrijo. I advise for several majors in the School of IES, and um, that's American Ethnic Studies, Cultural Literature of the Arts, Science, Technology, and Society, Mathematical Thinking and Visualization, and then our whole slew of environment majors. Three, soon to be four. My name is Jessica Trenkamp. I'm also an advisor in the School of IES. My majors are, <laughs> I just have to look, Community psychology, gender, women, and sexuality studies, individualized study, interdisciplinary arts, media communication studies, and half of the SEB students, Society of SEB and Behavior. Okay, uh, my name is Araya Perez. I am a student from the Science, Technology, and Society major. And I'm Ben Gardner. I'm a professor in IAS. I teach classes in Global Studies, Environmental Studies, and Cultural Studies, and I'm also the acting dean of IAS right now. I'm Adam Romero, I'm a professor in IAS as well. I teach classes in Environmental Studies and Science and Technology Studies, um, teaching one this term about the history of capitalism. Lots of fun. Well, those are our student-ready majors. Maybe start with our questions. Here we go. All right, Araya, what is one thing that you find truly valuable, unique, or important about your IAS major? Uh, so I traditionally started with a STEM background. Um, my goal was to do computer engineering. Uh, that was very big and very daunting. Um, so I found a love for IES with Science, Technology, and Society. Um, and with that, I have found a whole new diverse set of people. I, people that I would have never, ever come in contact to with um, uh, gender classes, with sexuality, and other um, legal classes that I just wouldn't have met other people. And Araya, what is one thing that a student considering an IS major should know? <laughs> Get ready to research. <laughs> I read every single day, at least for two hours. So be ready to research and analyze um, the tons of data that your professors are going to give you. All right, thank you. Jessica, could you represent the student who couldn't make it today because she's probably busy researching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm. Um, I am here representing Nicole Carter. She's a GWSS student. Um, she's not able to make it today, but have any of you seen this? Sorry for the <laughs> glamour people. This is in our office. You can also find it around campus, um, but thank you so much for having a copy. Um, Nicole is actually part of this. This was made in a class called BIS. 227 Rad Women of the Global South. 
Um, the students work together to look at um, famous feminists, both alive and not alive. They do artistic representation. Some of them are really good. Some of them are very um, artistic. Uh, so it has information about all the people um, from the Pacific Northwest. There's actually, um, on our website, if you look right now, there's a picture of Patty Murray holding a copy. So it's pretty exciting. Um, what was the first poem? Sorry. <laughs> So I think something that's really interesting about the gender, women, and sexuality studies minor, or sorry, there is a major and a minor, um, is that people often ask, like, so what do I do with this major? Is there a job called gender and sexuality studies? So what do those people do? And I think something that the gender, women, sexuality studies major faculty are really good at is talking about the skills that you gain in the GWSS major Similar to a lot of the, our other IS majors, um, meet requirements for every job, any job you can think of. Writing and communication skills, working in teams. Not sure if you guys do that a lot now, but you certainly will if you come to IS. Um, looking at diversity and intersexuality and how to learn and teach people with interdisciplinarity are all common themes throughout the major, so that's why when Ava said you could really do any kind of job with this degree, but I think a lot of our GWSS people go into policy, they go into nonprofit work, um, we have a few people who are published writers, we have people who are YouTube stars, Flawless Kevin, check it out. Um, we have people that work with Senator Patty Murray. So there's a huge range of people in that major. And um, one thing we didn't mention is each of these major pages, if you click on them <clears throat> and then click on the courses, at the very top is a list of recommended courses. We recommend you check out if you're maybe interested in the major. And they're going to give you a good sense of what the major is all about. Also, GWSS has a Facebook page. You should certainly check out. There's events, there's reading, articles, current, you know, the next event in GWSS, so check that out. And second one, what is one thing that a student considering major or minor in IS should know? Other than all the things I just said. <laughs> um, group work makes the dream work, I'll say. Um, we ask a lot of our students to work together, to work in teams, to teach each other, and to share from their own experiences. And while that may seem really tedious, as you get close to graduation, because you're like, I've been in a team with this person 10 times, I work in teams every single day of my job, constantly. And I don't think I would be as good of an employee as I am without the group dynamic work that I learned in this major. So one important thing that's valuable about IES, so as you all know, we live in a world of constantly accelerating technological development, scientific discovery, um, and that's what IES sort of investigates, right? How humans interrelate with science and technology and the role of science and technology in society. But for me, the most valuable thing about STS is it simply asks the question of what it means to be a human today. Uh, what is the one thing that you should think about if you're going to major is that is this not a science major? This is a liberal arts major that uses, or the objects or the subjects of study are science and technology. Right? You will learn some science and a little bit about technology in the classes, but you're not going to be an engineer, an engineering major in that game. If I could just add on to that, especially since you're pre-majors, if any of you have a Pell Grant, you could probably be eligible for the Washington State Opportunity Scholarship. That gives so much funding to UW students as long as you have a major in a high demand STEM field. Heads up, science, technology, and society is listed as one of the majors because even though it's not, you know, whatever, engineering, crazy, specific science, it is still a very valuable part of science in our 
country, in our communities. It's, you do need scientists who are thinking about these larger ethical, human-centered parts of science. And so that makes you eligible for WSOS. Write that down. Apply. Lots of money. Yeah, as an STS major, you can go out and do anything. Right? Most people who work in the tech industry have no science and technology background. But a place like STS would sort of give you both the humanities, social sciences, and that background in tech that make you fairly competitive in these sort of jobs. Yeah, I think so. I might take a slightly different tactic. So remind me, what's the name of the class you're all in? What's, what's the class this is? Socially Engaged Art. Socially Engaged Art. And your professor is Professor Tagle? Yes, okay. So Professor Tagle is also an IAS professor, so you know, you know a little bit about it from her. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to talk to each other for just a second. So, and you've learned a little bit, I imagine, about cultural studies. That idea might have come into your class a little bit. Has, has that idea come in at all? Sure. Yes? Okay. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and just think from what you've done so far in class, how are some of the ideas that you've been talking about in this class around cultural studies, how might those apply to some of the majors we're talking about today? So, these could probably apply to any major, but today we're focused on gender, women's sexuality studies, American and ethnic studies, and science, technology, and society. So just turn to your neighbor and think about one connection from what you've done so far in this class that you think it might intersect with one of those majors. Okay, so take one minute, turn to your neighbor, and come up with one question. <laughs> about or you're I'm not sure about between some of the things you're talking about or thinking about in this class and what you think might happen in some of these majors. So let's just get let's just get a couple of those ideas. And if you're shy to say, just say what your neighbor said to you. So let's get how about the back row? Let's get at least one idea from the back row. Alright, come on, what did you guys talk about? You didn't say anything. You were just silent. You're still thinking. Anyone else in the back row? What did you guys talk about? I got to explain what the class was about because they're not in my class. So you explained it to them. What did you explain to them? What did you say what the class is about? That it's about how artists engage with the communities, um, or in communities, and also how we're pretty much that. How artists engage in communities. OK, let's get a couple of these, and then we can kind of come back to them. Great. How about this, this next row? One idea that came up from you guys. You're all staring. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, we were wondering like, uh, if like, any of the prereqs would be like any like, technology classes or something. OK, so that's great. We'll get, we'll get these questions, then maybe each of us can try to take it. So OK, great. Like prerequisites, what kind of technology might you need for STS? Awesome. How about this, this row here? What did you guys talk about? I'm going to get this row, then we'll, then we'll come to you. What did you all talk about? Um, well, we talked kind of about, sorry, <laughs> um, about how the art that people have can represent community, not only like um, their own community, but outside communities that they can also learn more about. Great. Okay. So question about like representation, right? So who's representing whom, communities, artists, I think we can come back and think about how that operates probably in all of these majors. How about here? Yeah. Great. So this idea of sort of, one, how people represent things, and two, that representation, artists might 
use representation to challenge certain forms of representations, right? So, okay, that, that's great. Anything else from this group? Was that what you were talking about? So, um, something I mentioned, I was a little confused on the API question, but uh, something I mentioned is in the field that I'm interested in, which is game development, um, how what we talked about in class relates to how we build messages or make a message in, in video games we make and play. Great. So why, why don't, now that you guys have given us some things to work with, maybe we will each just take what, what we want to respond to from that. Does that sound good? You want to start now? Uh, let's start with the sort of prerequisite question. We get a lot of, uh, yes, it would, it's very beneficial if you come into SDS with some sort of scientific or technological background. We do have some requirements that ask you to take science classes um, that you, that enable you to understand how sort of science works in practice or technological development works in practice. And then as part of the core courses, we would analyze the sort of human process of doing science and the human process of doing technology, much more so than the actual technology itself. I'll give you a good example. Uh, we often, as of recent, have been looking at uh, facial recognition technology quite a bit and algorithmic decision making around uh, sentencing uh, in juvenile courts, for instance, right? God forbid any of you get arrested, but it's likely that you will be sentenced not by a judge, but by an algorithm. And those algorithms were designed in order to deal with racial bias in the courts, right? But what we now know is that because of the way the technology was developed and written, it ends up just sort of extending that bias through the technology back into the courts. So in other words, the technology is designed to deal with bias is actually biased itself in sort of a racial sort of uh, a way. So that's just an example. Do you want to pick something up? Um, yes, you guys are doing an art class, right? So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, STS, the way that I hope to use it is in the form of emergency management. Um, I would potentially be the person being deployed at the disaster in the disaster zone doing kind of that kind of thing, right? Um, so with that, my first thought was how important um, information dis distribution is. Um, all these artistic elements that you guys are talking about are really important in how we uh, project information to the public when it comes to educating them on how to brace in an earthquake or how to get out in a flood, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really exciting. I'd, I'd love to learn more. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, when you mentioned representation, um, I think you'll notice that a lot of our major coursework um, throughout our majors deals with representation in media, representation in film. I'm thinking specifically if you asked your professor about the class that she's teaching next quarter. Um, it is Asian American representation. Um, it's an American ethnic studies class, um, which ties into our conversation here. Um, so a lot of our classes have that piece. Um, so read the course descriptions and check it out and talk to your faculty. Um, they have a good idea of what's coming. Um, I also, while, while we were talking, um, Nicole was able to email me her responses, so I just wanted to read those really quick. Um, and back to the gender, women, sexuality studies major. Um, something that I found valuable about being a GWSS major is the opportunity to learn about the lives and experiences of people who are often ignored or written out of textbooks. Does that sound familiar to the class you're currently taking, potentially? Okay. For the people that aren't, their art is not being shown. Um, all of the teachers truly care about the success of their students and there are so many ways to bring creativity and personality into the classroom and our projects. Being an IS major or minor gives students the opportunity to explore their individual goals and potential in an intersectional lens. Knowledge isn't simply about what exists in a textbook, it is also art, poetry, science, and connection. All huge facets of IS learning. And human facets. So um, what's exciting that you mentioned about game development and then Dr. Romeo correct me if I'm talking crazy about your project but like you're not going to hire coders to figure out where there's uh, well actually I guess they could use numbers to identify bias but like who are you hiring to look at lived human experience probably not the people who are 
coding and programming and learning Java and Python and other words I don't really know what I'm saying. Game development, like all of the video games, you think about Mario and like the little word bubbles and stuff, who do you develop or who do you hire to like tell those stories? The number crunchers or people who are creative and familiar with humans and our communities and the way we interact and how to be compelling about storytelling narratives, right? Yeah. Like that's I, yeah. So each of our majors on the board are very much human-centered. We are looking to train people who can solve all of the complex problems that you know come our way living in this time of age. Uh, these are human problems. We are humans, and we need humans to solve human problems, right? And so like, we can't just focus on technical expertise. That's why with IS majors, you're learning how to really think critically, think outside of the box, pull together different perspectives so that when you try to answer a question, you aren't just coming at it with one narrow approach. That's not going to work with how interconnected and global our communities are, right? And so I think that's one of the exciting things about IS majors. That I think the CLA, or you didn't mention CLA, but I, do you remember the name of that video game that's like the people working on the DFL? I don't know. Ooh. There's like a real life game that a whole bunch of students. Uh, hot Ghost Light Manor? Is that a thing? Yeah, you guys play that? I don't know. Check it out. Ghost Light Manor. <laughs> but those are culture, literature, and the arts majors who are literally writing the little word bubbles that people everywhere are playing on their consoles, right? Um, anyway, I just wanted to point that out because you hire humans to do the human part of a lot of our work. And um, in the last Pathway session, session, you maybe you heard me say, look up the term robot proof. So there's a lot of conversation out there that we can't predict the jobs that most of you will probably be applying for. We don't even know what skills you will need to have because of how fast technology advances. So knowing that we can't predict that, what we can predict is that there's some jobs that require that human touch. And that's how you can be robot proof so that a robot doesn't take over your job opportunities. You know, and that's what IS, I think, really does. It really builds in those human parts of education and academia. Yeah, I just want to reemphasize that the human aspect of that. You can be the best programmer in the world and go to work with these companies, but you won't necessarily succeed without the team that allows you to add that sort of human element back into it. And that's why these tech companies are increasingly asking for people with much broader skills than simply the ability to code, right? Most you coders will be out of a job in 10 years anyway when the robots take over. So, and your coding language starts like after four years. Right, so, so part of, part of I, what I really appreciate about the IS majors is it's training you to think. It's not training you in a particular skill. The skills you would get would be writing, reading, you know, interpretation, critical analysis, and that's what employers are looking for, and that's what employers are going to be, continue to be looking for as you move forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, yeah, so this is great. Hopefully this gives you a, a sense, and I think because you're here in this classroom, you're already getting a flavor for it. But I think some of the questions you guys are asking about these layers of representation, I think one theme that you'll probably find across all the IS majors, and you're getting a good glimpse into something like STS, but also GWSS and American Ethics Studies, is exactly this question of, how does meaning get produced, right? How does reality come into being? It's kind of what Adam was saying about like, what, is, what does it mean to be human today, right? That sounds on one hand like a really simple question, and of course it's also the most complex question. And most of our majors kind of get at that question from different angles. So of course you may, have a, you may be more interested in technology or environment or gender or literature or the law, or mathematics, but those all become windows into thinking about how, how did things come, come to be the way they are. And I often find, not all students, but I often find a lot of IS students, one of the things that motivates them is this sense that things in the world aren't quite right. You know, I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's something I'd like to change about the world. And that could be a good enough question, right, to pick a major. Say, I, I, I want to... I want to think about how did the world become the way it is in ways that I'm not that happy about, and I want to pick a major that's going to help me explore that. So in some ways, there's a theme of, across all the IS majors, but of course they are different. And I think you know, it's fine to choose a major based on just you know, what interests you, because you're going to spend the next few years reading and writing a lot. So you may as well pick a field that you're at least relatively interested in. Anyone in here want to go to law school? Not today. Wow. No one. Okay. 
Can, can I here? get a second thing for yeah. art? Art, we come across art a lot in STS in all sorts of different ways, particularly with design. Um, I taught a class last term that looked at watches quite a bit and the, the role design played in watches. And it's fascinating, you know, with uh, the role that different watch designs played in uh, disciplining slaves to clocks, right? And the role of design played a big role part there. And so it, STS definitely has a lot of part of art and design. Anyone want to be a teacher? Okay, uh, teachers. Do you know what you want to teach? Uh, elementary school. Okay. Yes, this really links um, to your grade. Cool. The reason I bring that up is a huge group of our American ethnic studies culture literature and the art students are pursuing education. It's another path you can take, especially if you're thinking social studies, um, history, American ethnic studies might be a good fit if you're thinking uh, literature, language, arts. CLA might be a good fit. Think about what you didn't read or what you didn't learn about when you were in school. And any of our majors can help prepare you for how to bring that knowledge to this generation. For any questions, we have to get off deck so that the next crew can come up. But any questions? So as someone who wants to get into game development or game design, um, why, uh, I see you have like an interactive media design major there. Uh, why might someone take interactive media design over getting a CS degree and then make them do games on the side? Well, um, how can you stand apart to the one point however many graduates will be graduating every year competing for the same job that you are? One way is to make sure that your academic background is unique. IMD, Interactive Media Design, is co-offered by the School of IS and the School of STEM, which means we're sharing faculty, we're sharing resources, labs, etc. cetera. Um, the way that you get to the finish line, your degree, will look different in computer science and in IMD. Um, IMD will often add a CS minor or any of these other majors in IS will add a computer science minor. That's 25 credits of the neat business of computer science, right? So how do you stand apart when you're getting to that line and you're interviewing? You will either be one of so many CS majors, or you're going to be able to talk about the same technical expertise that you gained either through your IMD coursework, your minor, your hands-on experience that you gained in other courses or clubs or whatever. Um, but you have something different, and now you're standing out from all of the computer science majors. UW Bothell has a really strong computer science program, super competitive. That's another reason to look at IMD. You will figure out how you want to spend your energy. Are you going to spend it making sure that that 3-7 in every class is met, and that's all you can do? Or, I mean, I, mean, I don't know, that's not all you can do. Maybe that comes really easy for you. But for me, if I had to shoot for a 3-7 for every class, that would be all I am doing. I wouldn't be able to look at study abroad. I wouldn't be able to join clubs and look at leadership positions. I probably wouldn't be able to apply for the scholarships I need to stay in school, right? It would take some work for me. Um, when I do a major, maybe I do, this is not me, but if, in your shoes. If you're doing something that you love, it doesn't feel so heavy and burdensome anymore. Suddenly, like the learning is, it clicks and it feels great and you want to do that homework, you want to do that reading. The paper that you have to write doesn't feel like a chore. And that just creates more space for you to do things like CDLR classes, write that down if you haven't already. Computer, computer uh, community-based learning and research is when a organization or company comes into your class and your class spends time on a project for them, that's resume, right? So like you get to explore all these extracurricular opportunities so that by the time you graduate with everyone else, you look so different, so unique, and that is interesting. Especially in the Seattle area, how many people look very similar? Like with our credentials, our academic degrees, right? What can you do to stand out from the crowd? I don't know if that's a good answer. Can I have one more good. thing? Yeah. So it's also going to allow you to ask bigger questions about gaming itself, right? What is the role of gaming in society? Can games change the way people interact or do things? So that's sort of what it's bringing in, not just the computer science side. Um, a lot of the classes actually uh, were using games to try to solve social problems, 
right, rather than just sort of gaming. So it's much a broader look at the sort of gaming space. You know, you could, you know, gender and gaming is a big issue these days, so that's sort of what you get a lot of it. So. We're at time. Um, we are IAS, three letters. If you Google that on the UW Bothell webpage, you'll find all of our contact information. So please do follow up with us or your academic advisor if you'd like to learn more about our majors. Otherwise, um, we will accept your applause. <laughs>